Alrighty. If this is function g, then what is the slope at 2 of g? So let's take the derivative of this. So we're going to apply this because we have plus and minuses. And then for this one, aren't we going to apply this because there's a constant out front? All right. Now, so what's the derivative of this? Won't that become... Actually, first let's put g prime x for the derivative of the left side. The left side is g prime x. And then the x to the third becomes 3x squared. Now the next piece, won't that just become negative 5? And that's what I hope you can see because isn't there really a 1 power here? And don't you notice that this is your slope? This Again, this is a linear line, a linear function. So the slope of this is 5, minus 5 because of minus. Now, you, again, you could, if you needed to, you could put a 1 here and do the whole process to see it. That is fine. And then a constant, according to the rule, is 0 because this is a flat line at 12, and the slope of that is 0. So we don't even have to put plus 0. There's nearly no point. But again, if you wanted to, you could have, for both of these, you could have put 1x to the 0, and over here you could have said plus 0. You could have done this piece, but both these yellow pieces are pointless because this is 1, and this doesn't have to be added. So, let's now plug in the number. So, g prime 2 is simply going to say plug in 2 to the function. All right, so we're plugging 2 in right there for all the x's. When I do that, I get 3 times 2, 2 squared is 4. When I simplify that, I will get 12 minus 5, which ends up being 7. So my answer here is 7. This next problem here is a little weird, so hang in there with me. Don't get scared. All right, if the derivative of f at 2 is 5, and the derivative at 2 of g is negative 4, and h is this big mess, then what is the slope of h at 2? What is the instantaneous rate of change of h at 2? So what we have to do is you have to get the derivative of this. So the derivative of h is h prime. All right, so what would the derivative of this be? Well, isn't this just the same as this? So can't we just say it's 3f prime x? And yes, we can. So just be 3 times, you can put times there if you want, f prime x. Oh, okay. So isn't this really going back to the same thing? So isn't 5g of x is going to be 5g prime x? So this is just going to be minus 5g prime x. Oh, okay. And what's the derivative of this? Well, hopefully you're getting quicker at this, and you can start realizing you're going to multiply the 2 times the 4. So can I just write that as 8? And I can drop the power by 1. You can put a 1 there if you want, but you don't need to. So boom, done. And then what's the derivative of a constant? Hopefully you're getting used to that as being 0. Could you add your plus zero, minus 0 if you want? Yeah, but you don't have to. It's kind of a waste, but it's up to you. So now, aren't we going to plug in 2? So h prime 2 is equal to 3 f prime, what's x? x is 2, minus 5 g prime 2 plus 8 times x, which is 2. All right, so then we put 2 for all the x's. So what does that mean? What, what is this? Well, let's look here. It's not as bad as you think. Look right here. Doesn't that equal this? Oh. So won't h prime 2 equal to 3 times 5? And doesn't this equal this? So won't that be 5 times negative 4? Oh. And the last part, 8 times 2, is just 16. So what we realized is this is given. That's why those were given. Okay. That makes sense, that they were given up here. Okay. So let's now crunch these numbers. What is this equal to? Well, this one equals 15. A negative times a negative is a positive 20. So it become plus 20. And so we have, what is it, 15 plus 20 plus 16. We're going to add all that up. What do we get when we add all that up? We get 51. So the answer to this problem is 51. 
don't let problems that look kind of funky at first scare you. All right, and this looks like F, G, H, this function isn't normal. It's easier than you think. It's all based on what's given. There's pieces. You're also going to see more and more of these as we do more, so don't let it scare you. So most people get, like, get comfortable with this, and this scares them when they have Fs, Gs inside of other functions. And with practice, it will make sense more and more. The graphs of F and G are shown below. So there's F, there's G. H is equal to F minus G. Then what is H prime of 1? Well, let's first find H prime. Well, wouldn't H prime of X be equal to the derivative of F of X? And then G prime minus, by the way, G prime X. So don't we basically, according to our rule, don't we just take the derivative of each piece? So this is really what we're looking for. So if we plug in 2 to this, isn't it looking for H prime 2? And you put in... 2 here, and then you put in 2 here. So really, h prime 2 is equal to the slope, the instantaneous rate of change at 2 of f, and the instantaneous rate of change at 2 of g. So we're looking for the slope of f at 2 and the slope of g at 2, and subtract those. So how do we do that? Well, from a graph, you can quickly do it, especially because it's lines. What is the slope of f? Do you notice we're going up and over 1, up over 1, up over 1? Can you see that? Oh, nice. So aren't we just going up and over, up one, over one? So isn't, isn't f prime 2 going to equal 1? And for the other graph, aren't we going down 2 over 1? For the g of x, aren't we going 2 over 1? So won't g of 2 be equal to negative 2? Because we're going down. So can we now plug those values in? So is it f prime 2 really just 1 minus negative 2? Which wouldn't that equal 3? So isn't my answer here 3? Now don't let it scare you that we have a graph this time. From the graph, we can still answer it. So we take our derivatives, we plug in our numbers, and we look at the graph for the answer. Now this would be harder if they weren't lines. Lines are really easy to find slopes of. But for this one, they are nice lines. 